Hello folks and welcome back to the Syntho YouTube channel. Today I am recreating a track by Jocko and Chris Stussy. I believe it's called Washed Away. I'm going to share with you the 30 minutes of the session that I get the groove going and show you some nice synths and all that kind of stuff. And the final half of the video will be available inside Syntho and inside our new app. We have got a news feed, direct messaging and all sorts now and around 350 educational videos from world-class producers. So if you like making music and you really want to get good at it, there's only one place to learn. We also have a beginner's course if you're starting out. But anyway, I will let you enjoy this video. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. And yeah, I will see you in the video. So let's go. You wouldn't believe me if I told you what just happened. I just recorded this whole video with the webcam on and not the screen. So it's take two. So what we're going to be doing is a walkthrough of a track by Chris Dossi and Jocko. I don't know what the name of the track is. I'm going to be showing you the elements I've created and the process in which I use when referencing a track. And I actually explained a really good analogy when I recorded the video before. I'm going to try and explain it again. So often when I tell them to reference, they're like, oh, I can't do it. It's too overwhelming on one way or another. And it's all about breaking it down into tiny steps. And in life, when you want to achieve something, whether it be cleaning your room or whatever it is, you write the task down on a piece of paper, for example, clean the room. It may feel like that's one step closer, but without the appropriate action steps to get there, you may as well not have even wrote it down. And that first step to completing a task is often the most overwhelming and hard. So if you just write down to clean the room, before that, just number one, first, go and tidy up any clothes on the floor. That's one actionable step. Because going to clean your room, there might be 10 different things to do to make the room tidy. And it's kind of hard knowing where to start. And same with referencing a track. So what I'd always encourage is to go to the first eight bars of the chosen track you want to reference and start with the kick drum. And going back to the example, first you may, number one, take any clothes off the floor, put them in the washing basket. Number two, get rid of any cups or plates. If you're someone that holds cups and plates in your bedroom, I don't know. But I'm sure you understand my point. If you break down big tasks into small actionable steps, it makes it much easier. I'm probably going to do an actual video on this separate on YouTube because it's something people don't understand completely. If some there's a big thing to do, just get the smallest task. Say, for example, you want to start a label that's not really a task because it's so big, there's so many things. Number one, you maybe want to brainstorm name ideas. Then the ball is rolling then. And I kind of follow this for everything in life. I've got some new ideas for new different things. What's the first thing I can do? Maybe number one, research on X topic X. So things get in motion really quickly. Um, but back to this, I'm, it's weird because I just recorded this. I'm like, I feel like I'm repeating myself, but I, actually, I literally am. And um, I feel like you've already heard this, but you've not. So if you've seen my Facebook or Instagram in the last few days, you'll see that my rolling cloud was glitching, freezing, and I couldn't figure out why. So I've basically cancelled my subscription and said, big F you, I'm not using this because I've got a Mac tower, which is very powerful and there shouldn't be any reason for lag. So I've got rid of it and I did a lot of sound design on that for this video. So I'm now a bit like, annoyed because I had to go back in and try and get some with Trillion and Artoria and I don't think Artoria is quite as good as the Rolling Cloud but we've got some nice sounds anyway and I'm going to be giving you this project to take home with you so then you can have a play around with the sounds and all that jazz so when referencing a track I would always recommend getting stuck in with the first part and doing that SH101 so start with your eight bars and here, so let's play the reference track so we can listen. And as you can see, I've divided the track up on the left into the different sections. So we've got the start of it, we've got 16, we've got 32, 41. 49 and you can see this the start mark is moving to the bar i know it's not on 49 there but on 16 you see that it's on 17. so not 32 it's 32. and this is a really good way to 
break up the track and not get overwhelmed by the whole process. Because often people listen to the track they want to reference and they just don't know where to start. And this is a great way to do it. Because all you've got to do is figure out which new elements come in each section. So, and if you can't get a certain element right, then that's where you know you're going wrong. And obviously things don't have to be exactly the same as well. So don't don't get discouraged if you can't get certain sounds. Some sounds I've got here are different to the, the original, but I've just focused on getting the right melodies and showing you where they're coming in the track. And then it's just a matter of experimenting then. And as you can see, further in the track. So the best thing to start with is always the kick drum. So I'm just going to turn every channel off. And we're going to go kick drum. So the kick drum in the, this track we're referencing. It's got a nice bit of punch to it. So I'm thinking 909 straight away. But it's got this top to it. Almost boomy a bit. Almost like it's got a bit of reverb on. So what I've done is I've gone with a nice kick here. I'll take the EQ off. And I thought, you know what? It sounds good, but it's a bit short. A bit too 909-y. And the, track, uh, the kick in this track, it's got something on top. And if you've been with me for a while, you'll know that I do not advocate layering kicks it just creates a mess but there is something on top of that kick which is filling out the track so what I did was I put an EQ on this kick rolled off some top end so we can create some room for another kick to go on top and then I've EQ'd this kick there 120 Almost. It sounds like it's got reverb on. But I would never reverb a kick usually, but it almost sounds like there is some on that track. It's a pretty nice kick. Um, and then on the channel, I've got an EQ from Fab Filter. Got a Decapitator. Decapitator can add some nice color with the drive. Like that. So we've got Decapitator and then we've got Neutron, which is a transient shaper, which is giving it that pop, which is actually adding a lot. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to duplicate this kick and I'm going to freeze and flatten this so anyone without them plugins can still use the kick drum and resample it. And the reason I don't advocate layering kicks is it's just one more thing which can go wrong in your mix. And you may think that's not a good way to look at it. Surely you should try and nail your mix, but... In life, in general, if you just avoid the, sh avoid the shit things, then usually your life's all right. Um, if you know what I mean, if you just avoid things, bad things happening, usually it's sound. It's usually bad things that have a bigger effect on your life than good things to make you happy. If you just avoid the shit things, avoid doing things you don't want to do, you hate doing, you can live quite a nice life. Um, and it's the same with your mixing. If you just avoid things that can cause problems, then you make sure it sound all right. If you're layering your sub bass, layering your kick, layering your clap, layering every fucking sound, there's so many things that can go wrong that can ruin it. Um, just avoid, if you think I can get away with not doing that, try and not do it. And you're probably thinking, oh, maybe I, sh I, should, I should be trying to do more. No, a lot of the time, just wind it in and it can make your mix sound much better. But in this case, we've layered it because I could really tell in the track that we're referencing, there is something else there above the 909. So we've gone for it. And it's a nice kick, so feel free to use it in your tracks. But it might need some more processing, but you could maybe do that yourself. But yeah, I think that's okay. And I I don't layer kicks because I just think it's one more thing you can go wrong. And when it comes to mixing low end, it's just uh it just gets risky and if you one kick, one bass, it increases the chance that your mix is going to sound clean opposed to mixing everything up. 
So next, we're going to go to this snare. And if we listen to the reference track, it goes... That snare. And this is where I say, just pick the loudest element next, the most easy one to notice. So we've got the snare there. You can hear it there. Dun, 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 dun. Dun, 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 dun. Dun, 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 Easy peasy, we can all do that. So what we can do is create a snare um, clip. And if we look at this, I've gone for the pattern. There's actually two snares playing in this original track. It doesn't have to be the exact same sound, but I've got mine pretty close. And let me just turn this decapitator off. I actually put some distortion on it. And I think have it clean sounds better. Just got an EQ on there. And I've actually got the two snares call and responsing. We could spend longer trying to find a different sound, but this sound sounds good and there's no point me boring you with changing the sample. I should delete these other samples out of there while I remember. So we can see these. So that's quite a nice little groove. So once we've got them, the snare maybe sat in the back in the mix a bit more. And maybe the kick's a tiny bit more boomy. I like the attack on this one. So that'll do. And next, get the hats. I always just get the hats in. Nice and easy. You can hear that one in the middle. Get this in. And this is just a straight down the middle heart. We can all do that. And then we've got this next heart, which is kind of... This is like your offbeat one. And then it starts to get a bit more complicated in the sense that it's more textury mad percussion so we've got this clav here which is doing a lot and i've only just kind of realized this trick but i think i'd recommend everyone doing this get a clav and if you've got sound toys put phase mistress on and use this squeeze stepper preset which is inside drums and watch how crazy this is That's one of those sounds that you hear in these tracks and you're often like, how the hell have they done that? And yeah, that is an example how. And then we've got the EQ8 there as well. And it's really fidgeting around in the background. I think fidgeting is a good word for it. And then if we check the reference again, they've got a lot of these weird sounds in the 16th. So you could do this by getting a lot of percussive sounds in a drum rack and drawing lots of notes and kind of having the phaser and moving it all. And But what I've done is I've gone into Omnisphere and gone into the sequence percussion section. And I'm sure you've seen me as a user before. Any VST usually has a percussive or ARP or some kind of... You, hold, you draw one note for a long period of time and it'll play sounds repeatedly. So let me show you how, how this sounds. 
And then with the art, with the clav, sorry, listen to this. Sounds like a modular kind of sound. And now it's starting to roll. And I did next this texture. So if we listen to this track, there's that moody kind of swelling sound. And I wasn't sure if it's a single note or a chord, so I went for this texture sound. I'm gonna play a single note first. Uh, Mine's a bit cin cinematic. Oh, and to, while I remember, the scale we're working in is A flat minor. I figured that out by dragging the track into record box and then analyzed the key. And if you're not familiar with that, uh, I've shown up before in videos, I'm sure. But if you're not sure what I mean, just drop me a message and I'll explain it to you. But you just basically download your track or wherever you're doing, drag it into record box, which is the DJ software by Pioneer, right click, analyze key, and it'll tell you what key the track is in, and then you can work in the same key. Working in the right key is important to get the similar vibe. On the new Ableton 11, you can get clips which have the right notes for each scale, which is going to be a game changer for us all, I think, because I don't know my scales off by heart either, so it's going to be much better. So yeah, this, this texture, I've got this. Just something to fill the track out. So we could all do that in our tracks if we want, if you want to go for a bit more atmosphere, just find a nice sound, filtered out chord, bring the filter really low. And these kind of things can add some depth to your track. And then maybe I'll use Kickstart to sidechain it. And then before you know it, the track has got some depth. And it's not just beats and bass. However, I like beats and bass, so... Let's hear the original. Not bad if I say to myself. I want to give it a bit of a boom at 60 hertz, I think. So, hopefully, you guys are impressed by that. I have to say, I really think I nailed the drums. Um, some of the synth sounds could be a bit closer, but I think I've got the chords right. It was just a matter of um, trying to get the right sound, but um, yeah, we'll, we'll come to that soon. So if you look next, it's the 16. So in the 16, what comes in? The clap comes in um, and these open hats. Let's start with the clap. So we'll check uh, the reference first. Very nice clap. It's quite stereo, quite wide. Got some reverb and it's definitely layered. Really, really crunchy. So my thought process here was, right, let's find some nice, nice claps and get them into a drum rack and then we'll go from there. So if we go in here and we'll listen to these. And they'll all be yours to take home. Got an EQ on there. Rolled some top end off because there wasn't much top end. And transient shaper. And the next important thing is the reverb. So we turn the reverb off by turning the send and return off. Turn it back on. That tail is nice. Let's hear the original again. And we're going to play our clap now, so. Oops, we don't have that one. Let's listen to the clap. Really, really nice clap. Claps are very hard to get right, even for the best of us. So you've got some nice claps to take away there. And then 
we've got the open heart. You can hear it there. It's 909 open heart. So let's bring ours in. Then I've laid it with a shaker. I'm actually going to add some extra notes in here, you know. I think there's a bit more of a groove. Like this kind of like. I think that could help the track. So I'm going to duplicate that across. Velocities are key, guys. If your track feels quite full and you're not, but you're not sure how to get some more groove in, get some notes with low velocities and it can really just skid things along, slide things along. Um, I always forget myself this kind of stuff. Oh, and I've got this hat mute loot, hat loop muted. Let's check the reference. Pretty, 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 pretty good. Um, so that's what we've got so far. Then we're going to come to this this channel here. So what comes in this one is the bass. So what I might sometimes do is like call this bass. So if I know something's coming in on the, on the left, I'll call it bass. And let's listen to the bass in the reference. And I actually nailed this with the SH. And I've realized that I actually changed the bass line in that video I recorded before. So I'll play you what I've got so far. But it actually goes like this. I think it's dun dun. figured it out before as well. I think this is, maybe it's that. To be honest, it doesn't really matter as long as it sounds good, so. And I figured the notes out just by listening to the original track. Um, I mean, it took me, a, not a while, but it always kind of gets to me sometimes to get the bass line right. But don't get too caught up in it. As long as you get a similar kind of rhythm and then just experiment. We're all going to be able to get the notes within within like left or right, maybe one little nudge. Um, but if you can get the, the notes reasonably close, then you're going to be able to get a similar-ish groove. And yeah, it's all about taking inspiration from the track and then also trying to do your own thing. I'm reading a really good book at the moment about this, uh, about how artists take from others and all this stuff. I'm going to do a big, I'm going to do a book review on it. So I'm not going to tell you the name of it yet because I want to do the review then maybe you'll go and delve into it yourself. Um, but that'll be coming hopefully next week or the week after. I need to just finish reading it. Um, but it's about taking inspiration from different things and combine it to your own. Your own. So you might like say the, the synths from this track, but you want to use the bass line from a garage track, pushing boundaries, fusing things together. Uh, so if you can't get certain elements, don't think like, oh shit, the job's fucked because the job is not fucked. The job is never fucked. Um, just see what you can do, learn from it, figure out what they're doing, then do your own ting. So so it's a bit more plucky. Sorry, this bass I've got. So I'm going to go into Trillium and I actually use this bass sound in immediate one. And there's a bit of delay on it, so let's turn the delay off. And I'm going to turn the release up. Turn the attack up a tiny bit. And yeah, you can have some fun with this bass, because it's really good. Listen to this. Um, 
And if you were people like you were like more raw sound and stuff. And filters are the key to life. Um, resonant, cut off, shape, sound, getting that bright, bright balance in the two is often what can make your bass or your chords really pop. And we're just going to use that for now. I don't know if the notes go up, maybe. We're not going to lose sleep over it. Let's check that. nice so have a fun have fun with that sound i'm actually going to duplicate it and freeze and flatten it so you've got the sound for later if you've not got trillion that is you could sample one note and do your own bass line turn that off So next, 41, it's when the chord starts to come in. Um, let me show you mine. So you can see here I've got this chord. I'm going to show you the notes first. So I've layered three sounds here. I really couldn't quite get it, admittedly. I couldn't. Um, but I've given you some very, very nice sounds to go away and play with. Um, three different chords I've layered. And I'm going to show you them on their own. So you can admire the sounds on their own before we compare it. Oops, too early. So I've got three sounds here. Got this first one. Second one. Third one. And to get the chord right was kind of a bit of a ball ache to get where I was here. But if we look at the first one, it's with the Prophet by Artoria. Um looks like this it's really really nice to be honest so if you've got Artoria you can play around with that um, but I will be copying the I'll freeze and flatten all these as well I'll do that in a sec this one is Omnisphere and I've used I've just loaded this J Juno 60, Octophonics, and then this chord. It's funny, in the version I recorded before, I like changed these chords about 100 times and then fucked the whole chord up. Um, to learn from your mistakes, guys. Another Juno 60. So all together, they sound like that. And what I also realised was that I think in the reference track, there is a kind of Oh, I'm not using that audio unit. By the way, everyone, I'd recommend using VSTs instead of audio units. Audio units seem to be fucking my computer up and other people's in terms of crashing. So you see at the side, it says audio unit VST. Always try and go for the VST version. So I went for like, a, I think it was this one. Just add, adds a bit of. That is nice. We will admire the original because it is good. It's a bit more sweeping, a bit lower. And that different chord, it's not a different chord, the filter just opens up a bit. 
So it's like going... If I take this, this filter off everything, let's see if we can treat it as one chord. It would make it easier. Like there. Hmm, it's not working that. I wonder why the whole group so guys, thank you for watching the first half of this video. If you enjoyed it, the rest is available inside Syntho. In the meantime, there's loads more content to check out. Don't forget to check out my personal YouTube where I share some more knowledge and things like that. Like, comment, share, good vibes and all that stuff. Peace.